I had actually filmed it and he saw me film it. And he's like, no, no, Dan, we, we, we don't do cameras here. This is our private time. And I was like, yeah, I respect that, Jean-Claude. But damn, that video would have gone viral, man. Hey guys, welcome to part two of my interview with Dan Deltz. Make sure to check out part one, by the way, linked in the description below of how he got into the whole star tours thing, taking these big stars out to Australia. But in part two, we're going to get some very cool, unique insight and stories into uh, basically how Jean-Claude Van Damme and Steven Skull are in their real lives. So for more Dan Deltz, check out his Instagram, also linked in the description below. But uh, anyway, if you like this kind of content, please help support the channel, hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, and let's find out more about these martial arts legends. You obviously hung out with Seagull for quite a bit, Van Dam for quite a bit. Like, what, what what's some interesting stuff the audience you could share with the audience about just these guys in their real life, right? We've all seen them in the movies, yeah, but like in their yeah. real life. Well, um, Jean Claude. What's funny is that they're Jean Claude and Stephen don't like each other, but they're actually very very similar in a lot of ways. And um, you know, Stephen, what you see in the film is how he is. Why don't we just get you some red boots and a cape and you can fly around the city and stop all the crime? I'll give you a great example. After I toured him in Australia, I had an opportunity to take him to Malaysia for a film festival. They were looking for um, a, a talent to, to, to be their guest of honour. And I said, have you thought about Stephen Seagal? They're like, we'd love him. And I said, I've just had him in Australia. He was awesome to deal with. And Stephen was happy to do it. So we spent a week in Malaysia together. Wow. And, um, you know, we were going to a shopping mall and he wanted to get some herbs and and uh medicine and these types of things <laughs> and and i'll never forget that i'm in this um herbal chinese herbal store in singapore and steven's wearing his chinese gear with the beads and all i could think about was the scene from the glimmer man of course I was like, that's what i was thinking yeah the, the, you know, the <laughs> Uh, powdered deer penis, you know. Oh, yeah, it's bitter, man. Bitter? I don't know why it'd be bitter. And and I, I felt like I just was in the scene. That's I was like looking man. around. I'm like, how surreal is this? I'm with Steven Seagal, growing up. When when, when was Glimmer Man? Ninety six, ninety seven, something like that. Yeah. Era. Yeah. And I'm like, and here I am, twenty years later, <laughs> in a Chinese herbal store with Steven Seagal. What he's wearing the same gear, with the beads, asking for for, for medicine. Um, so that was kind of really awesome and cool. Oh, yeah, sure. And, sure. and he was always, and in terms of his generosity, man, he was always, Dan, do you want anything? Do you, you know, and you know, at a restaurant. And I'll, I'll never forget, he was wearing one of his tour T-shirts from, you know how he's, he's done some music albums, he plays mm -hmm. the guitar. Oh, yeah. He's quite an accomplished guitarist. And he had a T-shirt, I think it was like the Mojo Priest tour T-shirt. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I've been trying to get one of those forever, but they go for like $300 on eBay. And he literally took it off gave it to his assistant, had them wash it, and then he gifted it to me. And it was like three sizes too big, but I went out, got it, took it to a tailor so it fits me, but he literally gave me the shirt off his back. <laughs> literally, um, that's freaking awesome. Yeah, man. and, and wow. that's the kind of guy that Stephen is. And, and Stephen will ring me at Christmas and ring me at New Year's to wish me Happy New Year, always sends me a WhatsApp saying, brother, blessings to you and your family this Christmas not asking for anything, not looking for business, just a genuine guy. Mm -hmm. And I think he's often mis misunderstood whether there is, um, you know, confusion on his part, whether some of the stories don't add up or don't make sense or he's embellished them. Um, who knows? But they make great stories. And, you know, everyone knows people that have told stories or got things wrong. I mean, how many times have we watched on YouTube? I was watching Charles Damiano, if you, I don't know if you're a big fan of Bruce Lee, but the, the Bruce Lee collection. I'm a big fan of that YouTube channel as well. And Charles Damiano had this image of one of the Bruce Lee movies where there's supposedly this scene where Bruce has put this saw into some, uh, someone's head and there's stills of this scene. But one guy swears black and blue that he saw it on an original screening back in 78 or 75 or whenever that film came out. And the question is, did you really see it or did you just think you saw it because you saw this image and you're convinced that you saw it on the big screen in some edit many, many moons ago? So, you know, the mind plays tricks on us and sometimes stories overlap or stories don't add up. But you know what? Um, Stephen's a great guy. He's very humble, very generous. 
Um, and he just knows a lot of stuff, man. The dude speaks multiple languages. <laughs> such a cool guy and you put him to task on any topic and he knows it and funnily enough Jean-Claude is quite similar that he's a night owl as well he's always researching stuff on YouTube he's big into numerology uh, and aliens and um, oh really you know, I'd love to talk about aliens with Van Damme I'd share my yeah. UFO story with them someday man if yeah I man I mean look and 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 I'm a massive fan of the X-Files and not a non-believer but he was telling me about you know these predicted floods that were going to happen and he wanted to buy land in Australia because a lot of the world was going to be underwater but certain parts of Australia weren't going to be underwater um, and these guys whether you want to say they're out there or they're um, you know uh, eccentric they they've got a lot of free time on their hands when they're when they're well off and they're not making movies mm -hmm. is that they read and they research and they know what they're talking about um, a Van Damme story yeah, I wish I had the footage of it, but let me show you the last time I had him, the week before COVID, we were at a gym, we were at the hotel in Sydney um, and he asked me to come and train with him in the gym, which he has only done a couple of times. And of course, the fan in me was like, of course, I'm going to come to, man. train with you in the gym. Um, and he had his son, Nicholas, with him on the tour and we were training and, you know, he's just, he's an absolute machine in the gym. You know, he, he either had a singlet off, a singlet on or his shirt off and he was doing the lap pull down and his back looked like a Christmas tree. He was mm -hmm. so ripped and he just still had this, this, uh, it was, was, um, was, sorry, was it called serration or I've used the wrong, the wrong word, but you know, when they're showing this, the, uh, the definition and the, the clarity between the muscles, he's still got it. Oh, um, and, yeah. and he was, uh, uh, you know, he does an hour on the bike, like with the towel and the jumper, which I'm sure you've seen on his socials. He's always got a, towel around his neck and the jumper so he swe sweats it out mm -hmm. um and he just he will do right right down we've done an hour of cardio by this stage i'm buggered um and he's like right now we're on to the weights and then we do the weights and now we're going to do some punching and some kicking and he um stood back with the long bag mm -hmm. and he was looking at it you know moving it around a little bit and he kicks the side bag off the hinge and I had actually filmed it and he saw me film it. And he's like, no, no, Dan, we, we, we don't do cameras here. This is our private time. And I was like, yeah, I respect that, Jean-Claude. But damn, that video would have gone viral, man. You know, with him yeah, doing this. Yeah, put that out there, man. Ask his uh, permission man, he made to me delete it, it He made me delete it. He's not a oh, silly man. he made man. you delete he, it? He made but me it's a great it. kick. I could see if he, like, didn't kick it good. Like, nah, cut that. But it was a great kick. Yeah, we need great that, kick that footage. And kick <laughs> it off the hinge and i'm not talking like a little speed ball or a half a bag i'm talking a big heavy long bag kicked it off its hinge with a side kick wow. like a one step side kick um and this was two years ago just pre-covid like the week before the world shut down yeah that's much. cool man that's a great story um, um so yeah so there's a there's a story with van damme and and with with cigar and look cigar when we went i think i've sent you some videos and some photos but you know, when we went to Malaysia, man, he was mobbed everywhere he went. You cannot not notice Steven Seagal uh, with his size, stature, six foot four. Um, there, there is nowhere he can go where he is not recognised and mobbed. Um, and he took photos with every person. Well, that's cool, uh, man. He still gets a lot of respect and love in Malaysia. It's really... Yeah. Um, I think it's predominantly America the US. That, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of curious... I, I think a lot of these haters really probably like Steven Seagal. Like if they've yeah. seen him out in public, they'd, they'd want a picture. They'd shake his yeah. hand. They, they would not talk their crap that they talk online. Yeah. Like they would respect the guy, you know? I, yeah, I think, I um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and so they've all got their own, um, they've all got their own quirks. Like so, um, so Jean-Claude is not great with time <laughs> um, and you have to you know, push him to get to places and, uh, remind him again of what you're doing and what he's doing. He's very emotional. So this is a good story. Um, the first time I brought him out in 2016 uh, and we we're doing the photo line, there was a lot of people to meet him. Mm -hmm. And we're not doing a comic on scenario where it's four or five hours and it's half an hour slots. So our format is you do a 45 minute, 50 minute photo line. You do a one hour interview on stage. You do some Q&A with the fans and then you do the dinner. So it's an evening with Jean-Claude Van Damme sure. or an evening with Steven Seagal. So we had 400 people there to meet him. So we had to push people through quite quickly. And um, 
he was he broke down about 15 minutes 15 minutes in saying dan you're rushing these people through these people are pouring their heart and soul out to me and they're telling me how much they love me and you, you just you're just making it too quick i need to give them time and i said jean claude i'd love to give them all the time that you would love to give them but you have 400 people here to meet you and if you give everyone 30 seconds each that's 200 minutes you'll be posing for photos for the next three hours mm-hmm. before you do your interview and then your Q and A and then your dinner. He goes, okay, we do it your way. So, <laughs> but, but yeah, but it's just, but the, the heart in him is that he loves his fans. Mm-hmm. Like Jean-Claude loves his fans. I um, mean, he says it all the time, every time he goes live, that he always says I'd be nothing if it wasn't for my fans. Um, and he's always been that way. Like I met him as a fan when I was 19 or 20 in 1996, he came to Planet Hollywood for his birthday party in Melbourne. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget, I had written like a little, my version of a biography of Jean-Claude. It was like, you know, typed on Word document back then, 20 years ago, whatever it was. Um, and I wrote him this biography and I gave him this biography. He said, Jean-Claude, here's a book I've written about you. Why is there no big book come out about you? And I'll never forget, he was like meeting the fans. And the only way you could meet him at Planet Hollywood was to win, win tickets. Um, cause this was 95, 96. So he'd, you know, done double impact. I think he had maybe double team was about to come well, out. Probably and off. time cop hard. Well, hard, hard. Yeah. Time, oh, they, they had come time out. cop sudden death era. Probably. Yeah. 95. Yeah. It was, just after, it was a year yeah. after that. So he was still, still theatrical, right? Oh um, yeah. So he was still big. And so a radio station was giving away tickets. You had to win tickets. And I'll never forget my girlfriend at that stage was like, basically uh, there was people in like what we call the trading post, which would be your version of Craigslist, mm-hmm. where people were winning them and they were trying to sell them for like a thousand dollars. And I'll never forget my girlfriend rang the radio station and said, if you do not give my boyfriend tickets, I am going to pay this person a thousand dollars. And the radio station was like, who are these people selling them? They're not supposed to be selling them. And she's like, I'm not telling you who they are. Cause if you don't give them to me, I'm going to go and buy them. And then the radio station gave me uh, the, the tickets. So I got to meet him and tell him how much I loved him and how much he meant to me. And, um, you know, I got my hard target poster signed, which I still have framed in my home, um, you know, which I took, you know, I told him 20 years later, now I've got a blood sport, a kickboxer. Like these are the posters that I had on my wall when I was 16, 17 in the early 90s. These are the posters I get these guys to sign and frame because um, I keep them and, and, you know, love them still. But, um, but I'll, I'll never forget is that Jean-Claude was meeting people at this Planet Hollywood opening and this, I, I guess a handler or whoever was running the event was like whispering into his ear when I was talking to him, John Claude, we need to take you now back to the VIP booth and you need to mingle with the, the local Australian celebrities. And he turned around and he said, no, these are the people that made me. I'm here with my fans. It's my birthday party. I'll get to the VIPs, but for now, don't rush me. I'm with my fans. And I, I was there. I was right in front yeah, of him when no, he said cool. it. And I was just like, the respect I had for him, I was like, oh, this dude's awesome. Um, and then flash forward 20 years later, I was in his house eating soy cheese with muffins. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's really good, man. That's great stuff. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I really yeah. wish that uh, Van Damme and Seagal were buddies because look what happened with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. They had the huge rivalry, but then they became like good friends. And, you know, unfortunately, it seems like Van Damme and Seagal still have that rivalry going back to the late 80s, you know, and they never became friends. Yeah, like, uh, I like, think, you know. look, I think probably we, the fans are the ones that miss out, right? I mean, you think about it, like Expendables and Expendables 2 to me was the peak of the series. Mm-hmm. Um which was a great series, like a great throwback. Um, oh, sure. They missed the mark with Expendables 3. And I'm, you know, as much as I'm hopeful for Expendables 4, Stallone's more of a cameo. I don't think Jet Lee's in it. Jason Statham is the, is the main star, which I've met Jason at Arnold's house. He's a, he's a really lovely guy, a lot smaller than I imagined him being. Um, but, yeah, um, but I, I just think that kind of they missed the mark. I mean, imagine how good it would have been in their prime in the 80s or 90s to have Stone oh, man. Schwarzenegger would, Norman. Yeah, but, yeah. But I, I, think, I, I think in terms of back then it was the ego, but honestly, I think now, I honestly just think Jean-Claude and, and Seagal are just two very, very different people. Mm-hmm. Seagal really, um, he, he, he's not a big drinker. He will have a drink. But he's he's not a big drinker. He likes cigars, but he doesn't smoke cigarettes or anything else. He's never been into drugs, in my experience and in my knowledge of him. He's never been known to have been busted doing you know 
A-class drugs, for example. Um, Seagal, um, you know, he whether he's that the F, he's, was involved with the CIA, CIA or the FBI or, you know, he did the police series where he's the honorary policeman, he's got that real military discipline. Mm. So every time we did an event, like I would he'd say, when am I needed, Dan? And I'd say, I'll be here at 4 o'clock. He goes, I'll be here, at, I'll be ready at 3.58. Um, <laughs> so, 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 so Stephen was ready. He always wanted to know what he was doing next, who was he meeting, how many people was he meeting? He just has got that that disciplined military mindset is what I would say. He's a cook, plain and simple. A few moments later. Ryback is an ex-seal. Cook's a seal. Such a cool guy. And John Cena is very, very similar. Uh, when I toured John Cena, he was like, right, Dan, what time do you need me? I'll be ready five minutes before. He was always on point. Um, did not want to let anybody down. And so, so he comes from that real disciplined, uh, he's still into the, the martial arts. He still, uh, you know, meditates. Whether he practices a keto or not is a different story. But I think Stephen is a very serious person with a very dry sense of humour, whereas Jean-Claude wears his heart on his sleeve, is very personable, he's very outgoing, He'll have a drink. He'll, you know, uh, have a dance. Mm -hmm. He is a people person and he likes to party. You know, he's, he's, that's not a secret. Jean-Claude likes mm -hmm. to party. Maybe not as much these days. Um, but, you know, he's, they're just two very, very different characters. Yeah, so whether it's the ego, I mean, yeah, I think for the fans it sucks that they can't put that aside to go, you know what, we could make a really, really good product and we could make really good money. Um, but I just think they're just too different and um, whatever they had in the past, it's just probably not likely to change. I mean, I hope it does, but I don't think it's likely.